Okay, so the implication is that this B post has significant intrusion. We've got to initiate some preloading on it, and then we're going to make a cut on the top of the B, and we're going to start drawing this out. This is down dirty fast, so we're not using winches, we're not using chain hoist, we're not using grip hoist. This is all ratchet strap and basic chain assembly work. Okay, so let's start with the chain contact. Go ahead and bring that short little section of pony chain up. I want you guys to go back to that car. I want you to find a suitable anchor point We're using your J-hook or something else and create an anchor point back there for you. All right, brother, go ahead and rig that right around the beach. Go and you hook it right back on itself. Small B is your one. Good, that's great. Okay, now this connection between the ratchet assembly and the chain, I like to create the ability to have adjustments and resets. So I'm gonna grab another toe cluster. I prefer one without the big chain hook hanging out. Yep, one of these right here, okay? I'm gonna take my chain. We're gonna pass the chain right through the master link. Redirect it back into itself. Now I have an adjustable bike that when I want to do resets with additional ratchet straps or whatever I want to do, I have the ability to control this distance, okay? We're gonna drop the finger hook into the other side of the master link. Good, we'll just go ahead and draw this guy up now, get as much slack out as we can. Go ahead and set that on that link. Okay, pull slack out manually, and go ahead and pre-tension. Good, as soon as you see you loading your points of contact under the car, you're literally starting to rack for so you know you've got the load, right? Cutter up, cutter come on up. Nice downward cant so that this B-post is gonna spill out for us. I wanna make that cut. Good, now step away from the tools. Perfect. Now, if he's getting ready to close in on the end of this cut, that's what I'm gonna start doing on that ratchet. Crank it away. makeshift portable anchor that's going to rotate we've gotten what we got but you can see how this with something as simple as a ratchet strap i mean you're pulling that car this is going to radically sweep that b post out into a position where the next tool could come in which is ideally our spreader okay now when you approach this with the spreader come on up everybody come close so we talk about the options that are going to take place here just give us a little bit of angle there to the phone you're going to run two tool placements here to get this to continue this place we're going to run a spreader and we're going to run a ram right I make the decision about what tool goes into what window bay based on where my most critical patient is. So everybody lock this into your brain housing group. The RAM is gonna stay, all right? The RAM is gonna be the most continual tool in that zone until this entire side is all the way walked down to the ground. So if I've got a very critical patient up here in the front, my RAM is not gonna to go to the front bay. Everybody follow me? My RAM is gonna to come to the back bay. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post on the roof line and I'm going to push on the B post. Now to facilitate this movement breaking and swinging out to get the right angle set for my ram, what do you think I'm going to do in here with my spreader? Window spread, right? And that's going to be a, per, a, a temporary set. So that spreader's coming in, it's going to help facilitate as soon as the ram can take the load, now spreader comes out of the equation and when I need rapid access right to that, to that victim, then that zone's wide open ramps out of the equation and I can, can gain access in there, okay? So it's all about where your most critically injured patient is. We also want to take the chain out of the equation before we put a ram head on that chain and start applying a force or a load, side loading that link or causing a failure on the chain assembly, okay? So go ahead and bring a ram over to this bay. We're gonna work this one back to front. Spread man, go ahead and drop up here in here in the window opening. Okay, before you start pulling these, we're gonna take both of these top sills and we're gonna pry these out by hand. These fold out nice and easy. We're going all the way back down to the car and we wanna make sure that the weather gaskets along this metal bead are gone. That way we've got a good metal to metal contact with all our tool pushes. Okay, big ears back here on the door skin. There you go, go ahead and get that off the shoulder and just hold it comfortably. Go ahead and pitch your back down a little bit. No, down, there you go. 
Okay, it all comes off. Now everybody watch this. When you start with the window spread, you're only gonna get what you're gonna get based on the connection between the door and the B pillar. This is usually not my initial go-to unless this contact point hasn't drifted enough to get some gap. So I'll use that if I have to at first to get this to offset outside of this joint. Once that's offset of that joint, that's my preferred set point. Am I good? Okay, so close up. Drop in right at an angle between the weld seam and the B post. Closing, 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 closing. This is going to maximize your travel. Nice, easy set. A little bit lateral. Big teeth, big teeth. Everybody see it? There it is. Go ahead, go. Great push, right? We're carrying everything. And stop. As soon as he's got this big gap and we can get the chain out of the equation, the chain blows off. And what do you think we're dropping into this window? Yep, so we're gonna go non-traveling in up here on this rail grammar. And you're gonna beam down, you're gonna make sure you touch the B post when you're traveling in, not the door. Go ahead and shorten it up a little bit and I'll improve your angle. Good, now when you first bite this, just give it a couple of touches. Touch, touch, touch. Let everything etch into the contact points and then start working together, spreader and ram, to drive this guy out. Ram, you're driving it, spreader's kind of helping support. Not too much on the door there. No, you look great, buddy. Touch, 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 you get a bite. Okay, if you don't have a good angle, you got two options. You can either draw down or you can give him more and let him pivot. So stay right where you're at, draw down, go ahead and shorten. Good. And try again, touch, touch, touch. And there it is. So you're helping each other on angles with all those applications. And down to the summit. Okay, now, stop. Spreader's basically maxed out, right? This is a real fast initial push. Everything about this movement, instead of saying set up by cutting the latch, set up by blowing the hinges, let your ram do the work. That's the primary motion. And then apply corrective actions as needed, right? Because this dude may be bad enough to blow apart everything, provided this is stronger than this, okay? So Graham, when you're running this, you're driving the whole movement. Everybody else is intuitive reactors, okay? And you're watching this target. If this starts to displace, then that immediately tells us this is becoming the post and this is becoming the push. Everybody follow? Okay, so if he finds that and this starts to push, where is all this resistance coming from? The rear latch. So now that you're done, you peel out and you would pre-stage right back here on the latch to gap that if need be, okay? Once it's gapped enough, remember this is one of the hardest joints to pop and spread without getting a shear. So as soon as you see that gap open up enough that you can see the U-bolt, get out of Dodge and head up to the hinge because you're gonna need to do the same thing on the high side hinge if the ram doesn't blow them, let the cut man come up here and make a deep seat cut on the U-bolt. Okay, so cutter, go ahead and come pre-stage right here. Ram, go ahead and start driving. Good, he's still posting well. He's still pushing well, let him take it. He may pop it, let him go, let him go. Awesome, awesome, awesome. He's still carrying everything. Okay, and pause. Did we just pop? Almost, so he's literally ripping the latch out of the U-bolt. Keep going, Grammar. There it goes, that's what it says, don't waste time, right? He just took care of it. Now, where does that free you up to go? Front, Front hinges, go blow your hinges. Rear door is clear. Good, remember on your hinge sets. Try to go bolt head and try and use big head. Yep, nice natural set, get it. Good, as he finishes through his hinge, okay? He can now modulate the ramp and finish driving this to ground. So a partner come up from this team, 
grab the base, relocate the base to the map, and remember you just navigate a little bit. On the B, uh, move down on the B, move down on the B, move down on the B. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And grammar, avoid that B post. Guys, all avoid that pig stand on the B because it's an exposed stem. It'll roll in or roll out on you if you don't perfectly load it. So go for the weld seam. There you go, hit it. And here she comes, you're gonna go until you get the ground. Now stop, you're on the ground. Everybody look at what that did to the B post because we pushed at different angles. We've already sheared out two thirds of the B post. No relief cuts, no anything. Just the nature of driving at an angle is what created that shear on this posterior side and then all that flex improved it, okay? All right, go ahead and pull ram out and we're talking about the final fixes to go ahead and skin this guy out. There's a lot of different variables. Yep, go ahead, brother. not going to do the one that I wanted to show you just because of how this presented, all right? Usually on this B post, it is not this cleanly sheared from the interior rocker, okay? You might have a little bit back here. You might have some spot weld separation, but it's usually carrying the out, outer rocker with a little gap. So in those circumstances, what I'm going to encourage you to do is make a clean cut on the B, all right? A lot of guys will come in, you've got a door compression to the B there and a door compression to the B here. They'll start fighting with this, basically trying to make pie cuts around the pretensioner. Everybody with me? So deep cuts into the rocker. Um, it's, it's slow, it's methodical, and it takes a lot of tool placements and tool movements. What I'm gonna encourage you to do is gap the distance between the door and the B post and the door and the B post. You're creating gaps on each side of this B post. You're gonna identify where your pretensioner at is it, if it's still in the B post to come just above it and if you put a cutter blade on this bend and this weld seam and you squeeze right below the door hinge down here that you've gapped you're going to compress 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 then you can do it on the other side compress 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 and then you can make a, a drop down and make a cut the other option is you just go ahead and pop this lower hinge and take it out of the equation okay so when i'm gapping this if i have enough distance to ground to just pop that lower hinge that allows me to come all the way up into like here, just below the, the nader pen or the door latch and make a really easy cut up there. And then you have a completely clean removal of the B in the both doors, okay? <coughs> Much faster than the shear cuts. Because I can see my interior structural rocker right here, and this is completely filleted down to just the spot welds on the bottom shelf of the rocker, I can probably pretty easily place a spreader right here on the structural contact point, hit the inner sleeve here on this B and just go. And it's probably gonna rip it right off the little rail. So let's try that spread guy in and try just straight shearing that off, especially because both our shear lines are real lateral coming off the way out rocker. Our time test, and I'm going to push you guys again on Thursday when you're doing your evolutions. In general, rip and blitzes, good crew, you know, full side out back to front. Maybe you're running three minutes, somewhere around there. This technique, good crew, all dialed in, being intuitive, minute and a half max, and you're down, you're through it. Even if we have to work on top of the doors, is that doable for everybody for quick access? Yeah, the beef post blow out, so it's cake icing. Really, really cool, fast way in. Okay, pull that out. <coughs> We're going to jump right into a blind dash lift. 